Welcome. Today we are talking to Dr. Sammy Kella about a treatment option for CIDP that was given FDA approval earlier this year. The name of this drug is called Vivgart Hytrulo and is produced by Arginex. So let's learn more about it. First of all, welcome Dr. Kella. Thank you for your time today. Thank you, Chelsea. It's nice to be with you. And thank you for the CIDP Foundation. That's really uh, always uh, do good work for everybody. <laughs> we appreciate that. <laughs> So our first question for you, Dr. Kella, what makes Vivgart Hytrulo different from treatments that we previously had for CIDP? Sure, so this is the first FDA approved uh, medication that's out since IVIG was approved uh, many years ago now. So that uh, that's number one. Uh, there are a number of other differences that we can talk about later. Okay, so it sounds like that we'll get into it but uh, it is nice to know that there has been some innovation for CIDP. So can you tell us about the administration for this treatment? I believe it's an injection. So can you tell us how many injection sites and how long the injection is for this treatment? Sure. The injection is uh, short. It uh, doesn't really take very long at all. It can be self-injected. It's once a month, uh, once a week under the skin. The difference between it and IVIG is that this is once a week all the time. There's no endpoint. Uh, whereas IVIG, of course, is every uh, three weeks or every four weeks, depending on how uh, people are responding to it. Um, the other difference is that there's really no dose change as far as we have um, approval for. Uh, at this time. So, uh, you know, with IVIG, you can sort of increase the dose, decrease the dose, increase the frequency, decrease the frequency. Uh, this is uh, more or less a fixed frequency at once a week. Maybe you can get away with it uh, for longer, like every two weeks or every 10 days, but uh, the label says it's every week. Yeah. And I imagine that fixed dose is because of the way that the drug works in the body, which you, you briefly mentioned is different than IVIG. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, I, I guess the other thing is that um, that's how the label is written. So, uh, you know, you kind of have to go by the label. Uh, the uh, label for IVIG is also a fixed dose. But um, at this point, uh, the, there is really no, I think, uh, easy way to increase or, or decrease the dose possibly. Okay, good to know. So once a week, fixed dose injection under the skin, all good information. Patients can do it themselves, but where do they typically go for this treatment? Well, it has to be ordered through a specialty pharmacy um, and then delivered to the patient's home. Uh, they can do that. I, I guess you can go to your doctor and have it done, but that's kind of onerous to do that once a week and really quite disruptive. So it's a, it's a pretty easy um, drug to take and, and really pretty well tolerated. Um, we've been using it now for myasthenia gravis for uh, a few years, and by and large, I think it's uh, it doesn't it doesn't have any serious side effects, uh, as far as we can tell. Now there is always a little caveat, which is it's a relatively new molecule, even though it's been around for a while. And you know, with any new molecule, you have to have a critical number of people to use it before you can say it's really really safe. Um, and so, you know, there is, I don't know what the real number is, but the number I have in my head that I like is sort of a hundred or 150,000 patients, uh, to have used a, a medication before we can say, ah, completely, uh, breathe a sigh of relief that it, it's going to be really, um, safe. But so far there's been no signal at all that there is a problem. So, uh, you know, it's just uh, just to be extra cautious, that's all. That makes sense. Um, and you already answered my next question, which was about the potential side effects. But uh, we should probably mention, what about like typical injection site side effects? Patients, can they expect stuff like that? Typical? Yes. Um, you know, it's... Uh, it's not uncommon for any injected drug to have a local uh, side uh, side effect or a local reaction. Um, and, you know, um, 
it's you, by and large, most of these uh, local site reactions uh, improve uh, over time and get less as um, your body gets used to the medication. But it, 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 it can, you know, and for some people become troublesome. But uh, obviously, if you have a gaping wound or some bad uh, injury to the skin, you don't want to inject in that area. And you probably want to rotate sites so you're not injecting in the same spot all the time because your body does um, uh, make scar tissue. And so it makes it harder for the medicine to be absorbed from uh, that site. So you want to rotate. Uh, most people give it to themselves in the stomach. You can probably use your thighs, maybe your arms, uh, and, and rotate them around. Yeah, that's very interesting information. No, thank you. So it sounds like we feel pretty confident in the safety, which is one of the things that's looked at in clinical trial. But let's talk a little bit about how well it works. So the data from the clinical trial is available. And does that data include any information about patients avoiding CIDP relapses while taking Vivgard? Right. So, <clears throat> um, you know, first of all, people always want to know, well, is it better than IVIG? And I can't tell you the answer to that question because uh, there was no head-to-head -head comparison. Um, the way the trial was done was that patients had to um, be IVIG dependent. So they had to um, come off of IVIG and show that they got worse um, to enter the trial. And then they were given the medication uh, for a period of time. And then um, they were split up into uh, randomly into placebo or the treatment arm. And that was done for a period of time. And when you compare those patients who um, were given the drug compared to placebo, they did a lot better. Uh, fewer relapses uh, and uh, better, uh, yeah, you know, quality of life kind of thing. And so, uh, and then um, everybody who was given placebo went onto the treatment arm and uh, got treated uh, with the medication in an open label. Uh, extension. So um, most patients did really well um, with uh, very few dropouts from the trial. All good to know. Thank you. <laughs> so our last question is, if a patient is interested in talking to their doctor about this, what do you suggest they bring to the appointment and what questions should they ask their doctor? Right. So first of all, you have to make sure that uh, your doctor feels you're the right candidate for this medicine. Uh, you know, there may be a few people um, who uh, may not be good candidates for the medication. Uh, for example, people who are very prone to infections. Um, perhaps uh, that wouldn't be good. Uh, IVIG is a little bit protective against in infections. So, um, you know, some people are born with very, very low Ig levels. And if those were measured at some time, uh, you know, they may not be, uh, it may not be good for them to come off of IG. Um, so you want to ask your doctor, first of all, am I a good candidate? Um, uh, people who have uh, good uh, areas of skin and body that they can inject themselves. So people who have, you know, um, skin conditions of different kinds may not be um, appropriate. Uh, so that's why you have to have this conversation. And then people who are doing well on IG, you know, may not want to change. On the other hand, if you're not uh, happy with your current treatment, you may be a really good candidate uh, for this medication. Um, and so uh, uh, those are the kinds of uh, those are the kinds of considerations. I guess one other uh, thing to think about. Um, is uh, is this medication appropriate to use for people who have never been on IG? You know, the trial was done for people who had been on IG. Um, uh, it can uh, people be uh, who are newly diagnosed just go on this drug uh, from the get-go? Uh, I don't know the answer to that question. Uh, and so that may be something to, but it's not that they can't do it. Um, and I think this is a, a conversation that they have to have with their uh, neurologist. All good points, but it's all leading to the excitement that there are more treatment options coming for CADP patients. So Dr. Kellen, that concludes our Q&A. Thank you very much for your time.
To learn more about this new treatment option, you can visit the GBSCIDP Foundation International website, use the navigation bar at the top to find support and resources, click on the treatment education option button there and find the Arginex page and that will tell you more about VivGuard and uh, help you find some, some uh, questions that you might wanna ask your doctor like Dr. Keller was saying. So thank you again, Dr. Keller for joining us and we look forward to future updates.